In this episode, I head to Fraser in Grand County, about an hour and a half from Denver. With Winter Park to the south and Granby to the north, the Fraser Valley offers an abundance of trails to explore. I explore the trails on the west side of Fraser, starting with a mellow climb up Creekside. I drop back down on Flume. Both these trails, I would say, deserve a green-blue rating. I then join the solidly intermediate trails to the south. I climb up Chainsaw and continue up Broken Spade. I then descend Ico, then climb the second half of Chainsaw to Zoom and back up to the top. I then ride some of the trails again in the opposite direction to see what way is the best. I finish with a descent down Chainsaw back to the van. So I'm in Fraser doing what's on MTB project as the Fraser West Trails. And we're starting off with Creekside. To begin with, these trails will be fairly mellow. First time here, so not sure exactly what to expect. But the ride starts out with a mellow grade along the creek. Give a chance for the legs to warm up. Give a chance for the air to warm up. Started the day at 6 a.m. at a nice fresh 42 degrees. Should get up into the 60s. Storms rolled through yesterday, but the ground's nice and tacky. Beautiful conditions. Really nice view of the mountains. Oh, a deer. <laughs> Almost had a run in with a deer. If you ever wonder what I use to record these rides, I use three devices just to be on the safe side. On my phone, I use Ride with GPS. That's what I use to actually map out and plan the routes. And that's what's talking to me, giving me the direction saying, turn right, turn left at the various intersections. I've got my Garmin on the front. The Garmin is really used for the data overlays on my rides. Normally I use a 520 plus, but I've kind of lost that one at the moment. So I've dug out an old 800 for now, which actually I should switch the backlight off because this one has battery problems. On my watch, I have Strava, I'm running Strava. So we're going to take the top off. Sorry, it's warming up fast. <laughs> Quick top change, I'm good to go. Now this is the Creekside Trail. It's a very mellow climb, following the creek, coming from the campground up to the road. It's mostly smooth with the odd occasional minor rock between it. Nothing too untoward for the beginner to worry about. It's just perfect for campers to go out with the family ride with kids that don't have much experience with mountain biking. Nice easy warm-up trail. I'm going to take this mellow for a bit. I'll see you at a transition. So I've now turned onto the return leg. I'm on the Flume Trail. Coming up Creekside. I have to say Creekside is a beautiful trail. Nice little one to climb up. It's a uh, Kind of beginner, intermediate, mostly green. I don't need to give it an intermediate component because there's a few sections with roots and rocks that might take a total beginner out of their comfort zone. But otherwise it's a pretty mellow, easy trail. This one's flume. This has a downward grade, very shallow. So it's a pedally downward grade. I would say that this is similar to Creekside in terms of the roots and the rocks, but because it's going down at a high rate of speed, this is more towards the intermediate. 
than a total beginner, but it's still pretty. A beginner could take this slower and have a lot of fun on it. So, yeah, little sections like that put it more into the intermediate range. Great thing about Winter Park and Frasier is that while they're on the other side of the front range it's only really like an hour and a quarter, hour and a half from Denver depending on traffic it's not that bad I came up and slept in the van overnight but you could do it in a day trip or oh, there's numerous campsites but plan ahead <laughs> Everything I checked out was full from my spontaneous decision to come up here. To see my full rundown flume, click on the link above. Flume has mellowed out. Well, it's still a nice easy ride down. It is pedaling. You can't just cruise this. But this is just the type of trail I need. Well, I find my body doesn't really come alive until I get that little pump and stoke factor of the downhill you know I could pedal uphill for like half an hour an hour just grind it away but it's not until that first downhill even if it's mellow like this I'm like oh yeah this is mountain biking considering we had torrential storms last night this is not bad at all not bad at all Ah, we've got to stop. We have to do this view justice. Oh. Hello? Oh, dear. No, get away. Yeah, that was unexpected. Being pounced all over by an exuberant Labrador. Oh, well, I was going to say, beautiful views. <laughs> Let's continue the ride so now we're off flume onto chainsaw this is gonna climb through the woods <laughs> coming down I see it's got a pumpy section Oh, actually no, it's not climbing, I thought it was climbing, but this is not. At least not that section. <laughs> Chainsaw is pretty smooth, but it's got a playfulness to it. You can see the trail makers, or trail builders, are putting in some rollers. A few little jumps here and there. <laughs> she got a bit quicker into that one clear the roots <sighs> nice little boom here this looks like it's going to be fun in both directions a little climb now yeah, this section's going to be ripping coming the other way. So I'm still climbing up on the uh, chainsaw. This would be nice up here in the fall. The cycling for aspen trees. You can have a mix of uh, gold against the green of the pines. So I'm at the intersection of Chainsaw and Broken Spade and this will also connect up with Zoom and Ico. 
uh, later on. One thing I like about these trails, they're really well signposted. These are rated blue for intermediate. I'm riding this as a figure of eight. I'm going to try to do all, tra all trails in both directions, uphill and downhill. Otherwise, the standard MTB project loop is like an uphill and a downhill. What fun is that? You want to hit them all. Of course, it does double the height gain. So I'm going to see how much of this I can do. But first, my next one is to go up Broken, what is it called? Broken Spade. So as I said, I'm heading up Broken Spade. This is going to be quite a climb. So I'll meet you at the top of this one. So I made it up to the top of Broken Spade. I'm at the intersection of Zoom and Ico. I can tell that Broken Spade is going to be a, a fun trail to descend when we go back down it. Uh, but now we're going to do Ico as a descent. Climb back up Zoom and then go down. Um, I kind of look. I kind of forgot what I'm doing. But I'm going to go down Ico and then figure it out from there. So this is Ico. Jumps. Haha. <laughs> oh. Definitely jumps. I think I missed that one though. <laughs> oh, into that corner a bit fast. Oh, try to avoid the tree. Oh, that was close. That one I didn't avoid the tree. Oh, heart species on that one. Okay, let's get back to it. If you want to see my full rundown Ico, then click on the link in the top right corner. Nice. Some corners have berms. Some corners do not. This actually takes quite a bit of work coming down here. So many corners. As a first time ride down here, trying to do this at speed is challenging. Some corners have berms, some do not. So you never quite know how quick you can go into a corner. Oh, it makes it interesting. <laughs> Bit of a hole. This is pretty awesome that you've got these kind of flow trails on a forest service land that's not part of the bike park. There's nothing like this along the Denver side of the Front Range Corridor. Probably should be wearing my GoPro 7 on my chin mount. I don't know if my gimbal's going to keep up with all these corners. <sighs> Hopefully it will. Ooh. This is twisty.
And that was like, uh, Ico. Whew. That was fun. Looking at my GPS track, what I just did was quite different than what was on the uh, mapping routes. So there's been a lot of rework on this chainsaw. So actually this is back onto chainsaw and then we're going to pick up zoom and climb back up and go down broken spade. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the scenery. It's beautiful. You can tell lots of rework again on these trails. You'll be able to climb on this part of uh, chainsaw. Okay, we're gonna stop the video for a bit. I'll see you at the top. Always useful to have a chainsaw in your pack. So we can get rid of things like this on the trail. This one's a bit too big to move by hand. Yeah, that'll work. This is easier with two people, but one will do. Whew. Actually takes some work. Chainsaws for the win. So I'm at the top of uh, Chainsaw and now I'm on Zoom. I'm going to climb Zoom so I can descend Broken Spade. I'll see you at the top of Zoom. So I'm at the top of Ico and Broken Spade now. I climbed up Zoom. Zoom is your typical forest trail. It's kind of eroded, a uh, combination of roots, rocks and mud and down trees. Uh, as a quick way up it's not bad. Uh, it's certainly doesn't have any other fun factor like Ico or Broken Spade. So now I took a quick rest. It's going to be Broken Spade. Time to see what Broken Spade is like in the downward direction. Oh, these are pretty tight corners. Okay. What I found descending Broken Spade was that getting later in the day it was being used heavily by cyclists coming up so that gave indication as to perhaps this is not a downhill trail it seems a lot of people were climbing it to get to Ico and the descent on Ico so so much of a downhill run on uh, Broken Spade <laughs> oh, have a good day and if you want to see my full run down Broken Spade again click on the link in the top right corner Yeah, a little rooty through there, a bit of loam. <laughs> so far I would say Ico is the better descending trail. Whoa. Very tight corners. Yeah, these corners are really tight coming down. It's hard to carry some speed. To me, it seemed these berms were set up for climbing speed, not downhill speed. But perhaps I'm just not a very good bermer. Is that a word? I don't know. Anyway, I found the radius of the corner to be too tight for my liking uh, for the size of the berms. These berms aren't terribly big, they're there but they're not the kind of thing where I would expect to rail around a super tight radius. My gut feel is that 
Broken Arrow is a better climbing trail than descending, even with all the uh, berms and, and so on on it. This one has too many flat spots for a good downhill. This bit's okay, a little double there. And we're back onto chainsaw. Beautiful views. So, okay, broken spade going down. Not terribly impressed. I think that's a much better climbing trail. This bit of chainsaw, I think, climbs before we get back to the descent. Onto the descent. And that's where we went to zoom earlier. So this, the downside of ch chainsaw, very playful on this side. If you look closely as I descend here, you'll see a number of jump features. Yep, I missed them. But with some sessioning, you could have a lot of fun coming down this pipe chainsaw. Hey! Oh, I missed that one. There's a few jumps down here. I'm not going about that. <laughs> came this way this morning. What was that an hour ago? There was nobody here. So that was the descent down Broken Arrow. And that was the descent down Chainsaw. Beginning to get a little busy. My next run now is to climb up Ico. We descended that earlier. And then I was going to descend Zoom and then chainsaw back but I'm not sure I want to do that now zoom is nothing particularly special I might just climb up Ico and descend Ico again I'll see you at the top you can tell from my difficulty in breathing that climbing Ico is relentless <laughs> do not do the ride on MTB project <sighs> having ridden all the trails in both directions now I was getting busy around here I just got video bombed by a whole load of people. <laughs> Hello, people. Yeah. Hello. Sorry, I know. Just trying to make it. So back to the video. Having ridden all the, all the trails in both directions now, definitely I would say that Broken Spade is the one to climb. I'm not impressed with the descent on that one, and Ico is a fantastic descent. And for climbing, it's relentless. If you want to climb it, climb it at like 7:30 a.m. in the morning, like I did when nobody was here. <laughs> Don't do it at, uh, I don't know, 11 o'clock. It's really busy it's at 11 o'clock. Chainsaw's fun in both directions. So I'm at the top of uh, Chainsaw, which connects into Broken Spade. And this intersection 
is like real busy. But I'm gonna head down, down chainsaw, heading back to base now. Now I goofed here. Turns out that my GoPro stopped recording part way down chainsaw. But the reality is I was stopping about every minute or so for riders okay. coming up. So the descent wasn't what I would have hoped for Thank anyway. You, but if you got it on a quiet day, it is a really good trail to descend. Anyway, we'll move along to the end. So that was Fraser West. Uh, I completed the ride, about 2,800 feet of climbing. That's doing the trails in basically both directions. But uh, I was planning to do some trails this afternoon, but it's supposed to storm and my legs are kind of hammered. So I might have to save those for another day. Hope you enjoy this ride. There's a lot to explore around here. The trails are good. Uh, I started 7.30 in the morning. It was nice, fresh, crisp and quiet. It's now midday and the place is packed and heaving. So if you want to get on the trails, get out early. See you on another trail.